Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys how I created a beautiful set of sun and moon terracotta pots. Over the Christmas break, I painted a bunch of different pots as gifts for friends and family, and out of all the different designs I painted, these two were definitely a crowd favorite. So today I thought it would be fun to share with you guys the entire process of how I created these right from priming the terracotta to painting the pots and sealing them as well to give them a nice weatherproof finish. And to finish up, I'll also be showing you guys a few cute ways I bundle these pots up with some different items as well to create some fun little gift hampers. As always, timestamps and all the DIY supplies I used will be linked in the description. So you can always head on over there, check them out in more detail. And for now, let's jump right in. The first stop was Bunnings, which if you live in Australia, it's our main hardware store and where I tend to get most of my DIY supplies. The first thing I needed was some terracotta pots. I ended up going for these standard shaped ones that were 16 centimeters in diameter at the top. And I thought they were really good in between size for gifting as they weren't too big and bulky or too small to turn into hampers. Next on the list was this terracotta primer and if you've never painted terracotta pots before, I'll go into a little more detail about why this is required in just a bit. I also purchased this acrylic paint sealer to lock in and weatherproof the paint at the end for a nice finish. For paints, I grabbed some sample pots in a few different colors. These are water-based acrylic paints as well as a couple of different size paintbrushes. I got this medium one for filling in larger areas on the pots and the smaller one for finer brush strokes. I already owned a couple of these Posca pens in white and gold and if you've never heard of these, they are acrylic paint markers and they're brilliant for drawing on any finer details. Finally, I grabbed some six millimeter masking tape and this, my friends, was probably the star of the show as it's what really helped me get a lot of those crisp, straight and curved edges that you'll see when I'm painting these pots. The next step was to prime my terracotta pots. Now, terracotta is an extremely porous material, which is what makes it great for growing a lot of plants. The walls of the pot naturally absorb away any moisture or water from the soil, which can help the roots of your plant breathe and prevent issues like root rot. However, if you're planning on painting your pots and you go to water, whatever plant is sitting in it, the walls of the pot are going to absorb that water and actually cause any paint on the surface of your pot to bubble and peel away, therefore ruining whatever artwork you have going on on the surface. So before painting, I made sure to prime my pots. This step does take away that natural porosity of the terracotta, so your pot will end up acting a little more like a regular plastic pot in the sense that it won't be as breathable for your plants, but it will preserve whatever painting you have on the pot. Given that these pots were new, I didn't need to clean them too much. I just removed any labels, sanded off any glue residue that was left over, and then wiped them down with a clean cloth. I went ahead and sprayed all the pots on the inside and outside. I did this in separate sections to make sure I was covering all areas of the pot evenly, starting from the outside first, allowing 20 minutes for it to dry as per the instructions on the bottle, and then I sprayed the inside and then the base of the pot to finish. I did a total of two full coats to make sure it was primed thoroughly and then it was time to get painting. Let me introduce you to the Aurora pot. Fun fact, Aurora is Latin for dawn and in Roman mythology Aurora was the goddess of dawn so the name was quite fitting. To paint this design I started by taping out a line around the entire pot just underneath the rim. I personally love the burnt orange color of terracotta so I wanted to leave a bit of it exposed rather than covering the pot entirely in paint. For the base coat I wanted to go with something light given that it was a sunrise so I decided to mix up some white, brown and a tiny bit of black paint to create this light stone color. I cover the pot using vertical brush strokes down the length of the pot from the taped edge to the base but not covering the base of the pot just yet. Once that was done, I removed the tape and let the pot sit upside down to completely dry for a few hours. 
For the next step, I decided to paint on the sun. I figured it would be easier to do this step now rather than trying to do it later. For this, I taped an arch starting from the bottom of the pot, creating a curve like so, leaving a spacing of about three, four centimeters from the rim and then working my way back down again. I filled that in with some yellow paint, removed the tape and then let it sit to dry. Then it was time to paint the first set of rolling hills. I taped off an outline of the hills, moving up and down somewhat randomly, but making sure that the hill dipped a little bit in front of the sun. I also made sure that the ends of the tape overlapped neatly to ensure a smooth painted edge before filling in the first set of hills in this dark green paint. After that was completely dry, I repeated the same thing for the second set of hills. This time I made sure it dipped and also intersected with the first set of hills just in front of where I'd painted the sun. For these hills, I went with this pink clay color that I mixed up using some red and brown paint. I did end up carrying that paint to the bottom of the pot as well. I know you won't be able to really see it anyway, but I thought it just gave the pot a more finished look overall. Once the paint was dry, it was time to add some finer details. I decided to go in with my metallic gold Posca pen and draw some lines to represent sun rays. And then using my white Posca pen, I drew on some little squiggles like this, which are meant to be birds flying in the distance. I decided to add a gold rim at the top of the design as well to give it a more finished appearance. I did that by taping around the pot twice, the first piece of tape actually sitting on the paint just where the design finished up, and then the second piece of tape I placed about half a centimeter up from that, so a small strip of terracotta was exposed. I then took my gold marker and filled in that section completely before peeling off the tape. I finished the pot off with two coats of this acrylic sealer. This is supposed to help protect and weatherproof the paint, making it suitable for both indoor and outdoor use. And I also found that this sealer gave the surface of the pot a really nice solid satin finish. Next up is the Luna pot. Once again, a fitting name, I think, as Luna is Latin for moon. And for this part, I decided to go for a crescent moon against the backdrop of a moody starry night sky. I knew I wanted these two pots to be a matching set, so I wanted to use the same paint colors from the first pot, but maybe mix it up a bit. I decided to go in with the darkest color for the base coat as that was going to form the sky. Like I did previously, I taped off a straight edge just under the rim of the pot and then covered that area with the dark green paint. After the paint had dried, I taped out an outline for the first set of rolling hills. Once again, I knew I wanted to do two sets of different colored hills and have them intersect in the middle. In hindsight, I probably should have painted the moon on first to get a better idea of where I wanted the hills to be positioned, but it still turned out okay. For the first hill, I went with that same pink clay color I'd used previously. I let that completely dry before taping out an outline for the second set of hills. And this time I decided to use that same light stone color I'd used as the base coat for the Aurora pot. Once that was dry, it was time to paint on the moon. There are a few ways to do this. The first couple of times I made this pot, I ended up drawing an outline directly onto the pot, but I did find it got a little bit messy. So this time I decided to draw an outline of a moon onto some thick paper, cut that out and then use that as a stencil instead. I decided to go in first using my Posca pen, painting out the outline and then filling it in. The Posca pen did leave a bit of a streaky finish so I ended up going over that again with some white paint to finish it off. Once the moon was dry, I decided to draw on some little stars all around the pot and then finished it off with the same gold rim. Finally, two coats of my Rust-Oleum acrylic sealer and voila, here is the finished result. Okay. 
To finish up, let's talk a little bit about gift ideas. These pots are obviously great on their own, but I personally had a lot of fun creating little hampers out of them by placing a few items inside the pot as a surprise. The first hamper idea was intended for all the home decor lovers in my life. Inside the pot, I placed one of the macrame plant hangers I also made in my last video. And if you guys wanna learn how to make one of these, it's super simple. I've got the full tutorial up on my channel, so I'll leave that video linked in the description. I specifically made those macrame plant hangers with this pot size in mind, so they were a perfect pair. The second hamper was for all my friends with green thumbs. I decided to pop in a pair of gardening gloves and also a few different packets of seeds like basil or cherry tomatoes that they could potentially grow in this pot if they wanted to. I feel like you can always get so creative when making gift hampers. Some other ideas I had was to pop a candle in there, maybe some gardening tools like a small shovel or a water meter or some plant tags and of course the most obvious thing you could put in a pot would be a plant maybe something you've propagated yourself if you have indoor plants of your own I always feel like that's a really special touch to pass on a plant that you've brought to life and that is a wrap for today's video, the first one for 2022. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe it's inspired you to paint some terracotta pots of your own. If you do create anything inspired from my channel, be sure to tag me. I love checking out all your creations. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.